Hey everyone, it's Jamie from Vest Nerd Life and welcome to another episode. The dust has settled on another WHD event, or WASD event, or whatever you want to call it. <laughs> and I was lucky enough to get a content credit pass, like this one right here. Well, basically this one right here, I got this. I was basically there the entire weekend, playing some games, taking some footage, and I just want to share some of my highlights in this video. Before all that, I just want to say thank you very much to the people at WASD and Neon Hive for just putting on a good event and also giving me a content creator pass because it was very nice of them. <laughs> but yeah, without further ado, let's have a look at what I was doing last weekend. Let's go. Yeah, so I went in on the big main games pretty hard to begin with. I can't share much information about Dead Island 2, and I wasn't allowed to take any photos or videos, but I can say that it's shaping up to be one hell of an interesting game. Hell A indeed. Now the new reimagining of System Shock also seems to be shaping up nicely as well. It will be great for new players to go up against Showdown and hopefully come out of it all alive. And I don't want to go into too much detail about it either, just in case I unknowingly give out some embargoed information or whatever, but I am really looking forward to playing it. Street Fighter 6 on the other hand, I can talk a little bit more about. When I was sat down playing it, I engaged in a 1 vs 1 match with the AI, the gameplay was ridiculously smooth and stylish, and it does feel like a very modern Neon Dredge game now. Something I really like. I know it's been quite controversial, but I quite like it. I was able to kick Jury's butt as Guile, albeit at a slightly easier setting than normal. <laughs> now throughout each day there were several Street Fighter 6 tournaments taking place, with some pretty sweet prizes up for grabs. I was around to capture some of the epic moments of one of them, and there was plenty of head-to-head -head action, especially with the more serious players. I got some really cool shots of the presenter doing his thing, and even filmed the winner answering some questions about his victory. It was very exciting to film something like this, as I've never really done anything like it before. There was definitely a buzz in the air from the crowd, and the presenter was also really awesome for letting me film it too. Now I'm always a bit of a sucker for management games. This is why I immediately fell in love with New House. Very reminiscent of Lionhead's The Movies, this indie game lets the player become the boss of the movie studio, developing and filming scripts, hire actors and all manner of other film related activities. For someone who played The Movies, having a more modern equivalent to that game is pretty desirable. From what I remember, The Movies is pretty hard to get running on bottom systems and I believe it's only available physically, so Movie House looks set to fill my film studio management needs for sure. Up next is Horticular, and I think I'm saying that right. Apparently pretty much everything in Horticular has died, and it's your job to rebuild and replenish the land. The game itself has a bit of a slow pace, something intentionally designed. There are more variables to change how the game plays, and to challenge you more, but overall it really is meant to be a game to digest slowly. This might put a certain type of gamer off, but I think this game definitely has a target audience, me included. It's a neat little package of a game without a doubt. I dig the pixel art style and the slow chill vibe. The name is a merging of both horticulture and particular, so it's like horti -cular, horticular. <laughs> Again, I think I'm saying that right. Ah yes, vampire survivors. The team on the booth were giving away t-shirts to anyone who could survive 20 minutes of the demo, so clearly I had to play until I won one. And I got one on my second try. I'm quite proud of that even got myself a cute little garlic shaped stress ball as well. Now having played two rounds of Vampire Survivors, I can now see why it's become so popular. An addictive gameplay loop coupled with some pretty intense combat, especially when the entire screen is full of enemies. Not bad at all. This is also probably the closest I will ever get to winning a BAFTA. The previous night, Ponkle had actually won two BAFTA awards and they brought them to the show floor for people to admire. They were even kind enough to let people hold them, something I jumped at the chance to do. It is pretty amazing that Vampire Survivors beat out the likes of God of War to win such an epic prize. Massive well done to people of Uncle for doing so. Now I'm actually finding the next game on my list, Girl Genius Adventures in Castle Hydrodyne, difficult to define. I want to call it a buddy platformer collectathon with puzzle elements. Is that right? I'm not sure. But it does give me those kind of early Ratchet Clank or Jack and Daxter vibes. It's weirdly nostalgic for me. 
The art style is nice, with the animation and characters being full of life and very appealing. It's apparently based off a series of graphic novels that I've never heard of, but everything about it seems to have a lot of character. This seems to be an extremely competent and well translated example of moving property from one form of media to another. Jumping back to the management games, I also checked out Park Beyond, which was actually the sponsor for this event. I'm going to be honest, I don't think I've ever heard of this game until I actually saw it at the event. I had a quick go on the first of the two levels available, and I can't believe I might have missed out on this. As the name suggests, it is a park management game. Although with a massive emphasis on the fantastical. I only really scraped the surface, but it seems to be a game packed to the brim with imagination and creativity, outlandish locations and madcap ride designs. All very exciting. The first level had me like building a roller coaster through a packed city block. Um, I didn't get round to trying the second level, but yeah, it was a good start anyway. You know what, whilst I'm not a big fan of DC or the Justice League in general, I do think that DC have produced a few interesting and fun games. And DC's Justice League Cosmic Chaos seems to be one of those games. It features hyper stylized versions of the most well known DC heroes on a quest to bring the world back from the brink of chaos. The store was so popular that whenever I tried to get a seat, there wasn't one available. Now that's an indication of a fairly enjoyable game right there. One couple even stayed for quite some time, which was kind of annoying, but also good because we're having so much fun. This next game hails all the way from Taiwan. Quit Today is a side-scrolling beat em up. It's centered around offish culture and features a great art style and a fluid combat system, both things which are good in a video game. Seriously though, I'm very interested in experiencing as many games from around the world as I can, and I don't think I've ever played one from Taiwan so I might have a closer look at this one when it becomes more available. Now the last game on my list is probably my favourite one from the entire event, and this is Gladi Eaters. It's a fantastic example of why I love indie games so much. Armed with experience from a previous career in the food industry, the developers of this game have created a wonderfully fresh idea. It's essentially a creature battling game, but each of those battlers is created by you every time. That's because each of the current 50 creatures are based around food, or rather different recipes that can be created from them. For example, the simple egg. It can be raw, it can be boiled, it can be fried. Each of these states represent a different creature. It does get slightly more complicated than that, and honestly I can't wait to delve deeper when, again, this becomes more available. And yeah, that was just a quick summary of some of the games I played, some footage that I took, and yeah, just my thoughts on on the stuff that I played. Uh, <laughs> I just want to finish this video on a bit of a montage of stuff that I haven't shown before, uh, so stick around for that. Um, but yeah, if you, if you enjoyed this video, then by all means like, comment, subscribe, do that social media goodness, and as always, keep living that best nerd life. Let's go. I wake up to a little bit of drool on my pillow, feel like it's gonna be a bad day. Yeah, I'm tired of shit, and the coffee ain't hit yet, damn, ain't that great. I don't wanna go to work, cause my boss is a jerk, and I'm not even that paid. I need a change in my life, cause I don't feel alive, and there's nothing that makes me happy. Oh. Hold my beer for a minute I'm about to quit my job Cash in for a ticket I'm going on a trip And I don't plan to visit I'm gonna stay there Till I feel like I'm winning all oh, And this is just the beginning I need a big change Help me feel like living I need a big swing Home runs I'm hitting And I'll never look back Moving on till I get it all And we all got dreams We all want things But what you gonna do for it? How you gonna move for it? What you gonna be? And do you believe? Do